because when a kid comes in, the psychologist comes in and reads their backstory, and a lot of their backstories would make you cry. Really? I mean, just cry. Like man. what kind of stuff? Like a kid was um, held in a basement and um, chained up and fed dog food. That was one of the things. Is wow. like he was fed dog food and what? kept in a basement until like human services came, child uh, protective services came in and removed him from the home. And then the but dog the, finally got his food. The dog finally. Got, God, the dog. That's so mean. But I mean, that's so the man, kind of that would never happen to you. I would. Buy, I, would I would of, get separate dog food for you. <laughs> Welcome to Ari Shafir's Skeptic Tag. My name's Ari Shafir. How are you guys doing? I'm doing great, because it's springtime. You can feel it. Oh, I should get my Pit Viper glasses. I should get my Pit Viper glasses for this. Being springtime and all and sunny like this, I'm not going to do it. You know what? I realized too late, and I'm not going to start over. Uh, it's time for rebirth. That's what spring is known for. You should feel it in the city, guys. It got over 60 degrees today. It was like 61 degrees. When it's over 60 degrees, we can all feel the city. Not, all, not the whole country will understand what I'm talking about. And in fact, not the whole world parts of the country like what's six you know why would it not get to 60 degrees every day and maybe in the uk when i say 60 degrees you're like i don't even know what that means what, what, what's 60 degrees is that uh, of separation to kevin bacon we play it a different way they'll say in the uk where i'm going to be uh april 27th uh 29th and 30th in glasgow london and manchester and then we play it a different way they'll say they say we play five degrees of separation to princess diana um did you know she died in a car accident running from paparazzi? I thought they were going to, yeah, is paparazzi still a thing? Anyway, one time I had a, I was talking to some fucking hot chick, dude, at the comedy store. She was hot. And she was from one of those Eastern Bloc countries. So you know she's been fucking, she was 14. I mean, hot and, you know, trying to impress her. And um, TMZ's there and they come over and they go, all right, when you're done with the conversation, would you mind if we get an interview? Uh, now, this is 14 years ago. So I was like, sure. Finished the conversation. You know, she went home. Uh, did not end up scoring. But it did get me somewhere. It got me closer. And then I went to the TMZ guy and I go, you don't actually want to talk to me, do you? He goes, no. I was waiting for someone famous. And I figured I'd hook you up by saying you're important enough to be interviewed. And I was like, well, that did hook me up. It did hook me up. But not to the point of getting hooked up because I didn't hook up with that chick. I failed. I played it just terribly. That's not the point. The point is it's springtime in New York. And everybody feels it. It's rebirth. Things are new again. And the, one of the best new things is Mike Vecchione, who has a new special out right now called The Attractors. What a great time to be a stand-up comic. The best comics in the world, like Mike Vecchione. Uh, next week will be Big J on April 5th. But right now it's Mike Vecchione time. Comics like Mike Vecchione before had to go through gatekeepers and probably couldn't get through to get a special. Now they can all just make their specials. The best comics in the world are able to make their specials. It's fucking wild. So you got to go on YouTube right now. Go Mike Vecchione's The Attractives. It was uh, uh, directed by known Christian uh, Nate Bargatze. He still refuses to apologize uh, on behalf of Christianity for the Crusades. Many, many Arabs died, and Nate is still silent on the subject. Why, Nate? Do you think it was right? Do you think it was right to step foot in Jerusalem with a ham sandwich and kill all these Arabs? Do you know a ham sandwich is offensive? Uh, to the culture that was there. Well, I guess not most of the culture there. No, no, both. They all hate it. You're going to bring a ham sandwich? Oh, sure, killing, dude. That's part of war. That's part of religion. But you bring a ham sandwich there? That's fucking above and beyond, bro. So, uh, I don't know, Nate. I feel like uh, you, should, uh, you should say something about it. You should speak to the subject. If you go to Mike Vecchione's special and want to leave a comment, I suggest hold Nate to task on those comments. Say, why have you not denounced the Crusades? Talk about somebody who died in the Crusades. If you want, actually do that. Get in there. Get really in there. It might annoy Nate. <laughs> it might really annoy him. <laughs> it probably wants to just hear how his directing was. I was at the special taping. It was great, dude. Me, Shane, Sal, Big J, we were all there. Soder. Um, 
and you know, and they, it was like, oh, it was such a fucking fun hangout. It was such a fun hangout. What a great time for stand-up comedy. It really is. I don't think you guys understand this. We couldn't get our shit made before. And the, 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 the thought to even be able to afford doing it on your own. And then where would it even go? I've done more on my own than with a company. My first one, then Comedy Central, then my own that I sold to Netflix, and then my own again. Hmm. Oh, I got to tell you about The Beacon. What a glorious show. My parents showed up. Everybody was there. Friends, family, uh, mob. The biggest show I've ever done in my life. What a fucking fun time. Secret guests uh, I brought up. I started first. Oh, if you saw the intro. If anybody saw the intro that night, if you were lucky enough to be in your seat, tell me I didn't fucking put on a spectacular spectacular for you. What a fun time. We worked on it. Thank you, Jade, the dancers. Um, uh, and then the guests. I, so I start. Oh, I don't want to ruin how I did it. But the secret comic guests were Joe List, um, Joe DeRosa, and Andrew Schultz. In that order, um, one after another. Yeah, the crowd went nuts. Like, nice, nice. They went nuts, nuts. Dude, it's so interesting when you find out your friends that have gotten famous, just how famous they are. Going to a Yankee game with Stefano, and you're like, oh, right, you're way bigger. <laughs> I knew you had gotten more popular, but I don't see you in this environment. They went nuts for um, uh, Schultz. It's cool to see. It is cool to see. I mean, I know it objectively in my head that he's that big. You can see the numbers on his podcasts, you know, on Flagrant. And the numbers on his special. I think that's the most watched YouTube special of all time by a non-Indian. Definitely in the last two years. Nope. Did I lock myself out? I did not. Um, but then you see the, the response and, like, that's more real to me than numbers on a fucking bottom of a video. Videos like The Attractives by Mike Vecchione. Get in there now. Take Nate to task. Um, God, that was a fucking fun show. What a fun, fun time. DeRosa uh, uh, catered the, the event afterwards. DeRosa in some local pizza place. Um, I just like, it was just such a celebration. I, I haven't put on a show that, that, that I'm not taping that I cared so much about in a long fucking time. And it was such a fucking, the crowd was nuts. You guys were fucking nuts. I mean, legitimately, I, I always think the clubs are so much better than theaters, but that theater, I don't know. I don't know. You got to rethink it. You got to rethink. I don't think you can do only theaters. Ah, okay. I'm talking inside my own head now. Ladies and gentlemen, let's start the episode. Well, I got Mike Vecchione and talk about his days as a teacher in a fucking bad kid's school. Mike, the fucking wrestler Vecchione. Pudge, chud, he's like, he's like, chunk. I don't know. He's like square. He's like square. He looks like a can of, um. Looks like a can of a Foster's beer. That's 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 a fair that's a fair uh, assessment. Mike Vecchione looks like a can of Foster's beer. <laughs> Sorry, dude. Sorry, but anyway, we had a great conversation. He told me all about like uh, being a fucking. He was just a fucking bruiser. He was an enforcer in, in the in the in the the, the I guess Philadelphia teaching uh, at the bad kids schools. I don't know. The special eds and the fucking the kids who are like, I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. I don't I don't I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. Um, I had a great New York playlist. When I do these theaters, I choose a playlist of all musicians in their town. I go over it. Um, bands that I like, new bands I discovered by looking, and then uh, it was a good one. We got in uh, Lisa Lisa in there. Um, um, finished with uh, Feral Manch and um, Jump in the Line. Heli Belafonte and I don't know, there's a bunch of there. the LCD sound system for sure. I had to leave some bands out. New York has a lot of good bands. Let's start the fucking episode, you guys. It was great. Great episode and a great special. Pause right now. Go watch. At least go click on um, The Attractives and it'll remind you to watch it again. If you don't feel like watching it right now, just go click on it right now and so that way YouTube will be like, do you want to do you want to uh, get back to watching this later? Which you should, because Mike is one of the best. I'm not saying that lightly. But his special in 2017, it was a CD. It was, everyone was like, that was the, the album of the year. And everybody was saying that. And it was because they were calling it a throwback, because it was just jokes, 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 jokes. He, I, I, all of us, envious joke writing. It's like you see him, you're like, fuck, it's just so well done. And I know you guys are going to love it. So go watch the attraction right now. And uh, and then come right back here, and let's start the episode. Ari Shafir Skeptic, episode 511, I think. Um, wait, I had a name for it. Not school days. 
Yeah, maybe school days. Uh, oh, Professor Payne. That's it. Professor Payne with Mike Vecchione. Oh, I remembered one for once. I remembered one. Starts now. Go watch. <laughs> you ever get the overly Italian thing where it's like, no, no, I can't sit with my back to the door. <laughs> But, oh, because you're yeah, because you're a risk for an assassination. That's yes. right. That's right. I remember now that you're the one who's like might be assassinated because of your ties <laughs> to the family. It's all nonsense. Oh my god! <laughs> Literally nobody from the mafia nobody. would ever tell you they're in the mafia. <laughs> yeah, not only that, it's like they don't kill each other anymore. They don't. No, there is a moratorium off on uh, murder because it just carries too long of a sentence. Interesting. Yeah. So they just stopped. Imagine they could have just not done it in the first place. Wow. But they were like, yeah, this is too much jail time. So There's too many ahead? cooperators. So they <laughs> yeah. just go, okay, we're not going to, we're just not going to talk to you anymore. Aw. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's a way that's worth the death. Yeah. You got a time out. <laughs> um, Mike Vecchione has a new special out right now on YouTube called, hold on, let me guess. Dumb fucking guinea who's trying to get away from his past. Is that <laughs> oh it? Oh my god! I, I I forgot the exact title. What is it? The attractives. <laughs> the attractives. Yes. <laughs> is that what it's called? Yeah. The attractives. The attractives. Oh, nice. nice. It's um, hot people can watch it, but if you're not hot, you could also watch it. So it's good. Is this about home. um? Is this attractives? What's that? Which one bit's that from? Is that from the um? Uh, you know when, when we had to wear ma when we had to wear masks, yep. and people couldn't tell that we were attractive, and it was very hard for attractive people back then because we're used to being treated differently because we are attractive we, that is who we are that's who that we are that is who we are and they took that from us yeah that and they took, took that, that from us, us. These and then they tried to extend it by going you still need to wear it you still need to wear it it's like who, I smell ugly Uggos. that's right yeah these people in Wuhan they all look the same anyway yeah. <laughs> cut that uh, is, is um... <laughs> edit right there whatever the timestamp stamp is <laughs> they didn't have this issue <laughs> they didn't have it was it a lab? Was it not a lab? I'm waiting for COVID the musical where Nathan Lane plays <laughs> Dr. Fauci. <laughs> um, it's so funny. Everything becomes a musical a couple years later it now, doesn't it? A musical. There's Game of Thrones the musical. Mm. Holoc Rocky the musical. Holocaust the musical. Rocky Holocaust the musical. The musical? It's not, but there should be. Wow. And it never happened, so it's a musical now? It's a fantasy. Got Game of Thrones. <laughs> <laughs> um... <laughs> But go right now. Mike's been the fucking, well, I, you know, I know you're going to be uncomfortable, but you're one of the best comics in the fucking, in the country, in the city, definitely. Thank you, buddy. Um, Yeah, guaranteed good time. Click on it right now and support this kind of shit. It's, it's uh, what is it, Nate Bargatze YouTube? Nate Bargatze, Nate Land YouTube. Yeah, and um, um, I'll get you the link. Okay, I'll post it. There'll be a link right here right now. But Mike Becky on Attractives should be enough to get it to the YouTube page. <laughs> Nate Land. <laughs> Actually, why don't you leave in the comments maybe a small story on how you've been bullied or or, or singled out because of the level of attraction you have. Yes. Um, yeah. This one time, I was on the subway. This reminds me. I was getting on the subway. I was going down the steps. Yeah. Somebody was um, shitting on the, the bottom step. Right. Uh, and I looked, and he goes, what are you looking at? Um, as he was like, I think shitting and wiping, scoop wiping. Right. Um and that's what I have to deal with as an attractive person. Yeah. You know, he must have been like, wow, what are you looking at? What are you looking wow, at? I didn't expect to have someone so beautiful looking at me. But he was making a point. It's like, don't you take a morning dump? Don't, don't, yeah. And you're judging me because this is my home, the second tier of the stairs going down to the end. We entry. can't all be as attractive as you are, yes. right, is what he's saying, subtext. Yeah. yeah. And it depends how you look at it. That could be art. That's art now, by the way. And it's sexy and therefore high end attractive. I mean, in a way, it is. Yeah. Um, Maybe you're just not cultured. <laughs> Did you ever turn? Do you ever turn your judgment onto yourself? Oh, I'll be like, All maybe right. I'm just not cultured. And that's yes. the issue here. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. God. Yeah, that's my privilege and my right <laughs> as an American. Um, I love these buzzwords. The it's your privilege. <laughs> it's your right. That's that's I always have to say, that's San Francisco's chief export is buzzwords. Yeah, I love it. Microaggression, like that's the that's what they give to the world. It felt like you were throwing shade at that guy who was uh, trying to just stay regular and probably had a lot of fiber. Did you name check him? <laughs> um. Anyway, I'm excited for you. Thank you. It's been buddy. a while. Thank is Megabus on this one? No, Megabus is on the one that we did. 
which I am going to, I swear I am going to release now, because everybody it. puts so much work into it, and I'm 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 re- I will release that on my YouTube page. Yeah, you after. got probably like six to nine months, and then yeah, hitch up with a follow up, yeah. which is a, which is. I never great. had children, but I like to do everything. Um, the time it takes to have a baby, nine yeah. months. Yeah. I will put another. I will give birth to another one. The just Jason period, a yeah. special <laughs> station is a huge word. <laughs> I mean, is. can your fans? I mean, my my fans are low income whites, <laughs> so I don't think that they understand. That kind of vocabulary. But I love calling people low income whites. It makes that's my my favorite. That's my it's new favorite good title for a special. My favorite th- favorite whites. thing to do now. Low income whites because <laughs> it's like no excuses whites. No, and I have um I do that in my uh, set. And I had a woman, an African American woman, come up to me, and she goes, um, I think it was in Colorado. She goes, I'm an affluent African American woman. I go, let me ask you this: Did you come to my show? She goes, Yeah. I go. You're a low income white. You're, just, you're living as an African American woman, but that's your identity is low income white. <laughs> um, you were a teacher for a while. Mm-hmm. Special ed, special no. ed, behavioral and emotional disabilities. I dated a chick who did that. It was yeah. fun, autistic therapy yeah. stuff. How'd you get into it? First of all, when was this? I got into it because I graduated from college with a criminal justice degree, and with a criminal justice degree, you can. You really can't do anything with it. You can become, I guess, a parole officer, probation. You can go to the police academy to become a cop. I guess you that can go to like law a lot of fun school. From the movies I've seen, <laughs> the police academy. Yeah, <laughs> it seems like a lot of hijinks and special sound effects. <laughs> I liked Citizens on Patrol. That was, <laughs> it was my favorite the best one. one. Yeah, High Tower. Yeah, and uh, Tackleberry. Tackleberry, Tackleberry was the guy who'd great. shoot everything. He was just ready with the guns. Yeah. That chick who was in love with him because yes. he had the fucking giant guns. Those are great movies, actually. I gotta go back to it. Couldn't be made it. today. There's definitely gonna be some shot. I just remember the, the best part was that if you're chasing a perp or yeah. and then they run it and you accidentally go into the gay bar, the the blue oyster. Yeah, yeah. And then the door closed behind you and it was like gulp because <laughs> you were gonna get legally raped. You went into a gay bar. But that's actually how gay bars were back then. I mean, I don't think there was any exaggeration. (laughs) I forgot about that. And they called that back throughout the movie. Yeah. I gotta write down these fucking musical notes. Where's my goddamn notebook? Did I have it somewhere? Maybe I left it outside. Um so you got into it. Keep talking. I got into it and uh I went to uh, had a criminal justice degree, couldn't do anything with it. Uh, it, without uh, some other training, it felt like. So I started, I needed a job because uh, the girl I was with was moved to Philadelphia to go to law school. So I wanted to move to Philadelphia to be with her. And I got a job at a, an adjudicated school. What does that mean? A school for kids when they commit a crime, depending on what crime they commit, assault, um, stealing a car, battery, that kind of a thing. They would either, they have a choice to either go to lockup or they could go to this school, and this school. No. This school was a legendary school. It took it took everybody uh, in the country. It took all, for, people from kids from all different states. They had contracts with di- the different states, so they'd have. It was a lot of gang kids. So they have kids from Philadelphia, which was close by. They would have kids from Michigan, California, Texas. A lot of Texas kids. They'd bust them away from their. Not bust them. They'd fly them in, and they would instead of going to lockup, they would do a year. Year and a half at this school. It was great. It was a great program. Did they have my friend went to Mark Twain? He was so bad at this Jewish school. They sent him to Mark Twain. Yeah. And Mark Twain, tell me if this is like this or not. It had a system of like you move up and down in status with good behavior and bad behavior. Yeah. And then you lose privileges. That's kind of what it was. Wow. But it was a program where it was like you could, there was level. They did levels of confrontation, and one of the levels of confrontation, when it gets more serious, is you could touch the kids for attention. So you could put your hands on them if necessary, because these kids were rough, rough kids. You had to. You had to. So, um, but the place really ran well for a long. It's closed now because of uh, the age that we live in, and I think there were some scandals there also. So I don't know really know the story. You're always going to end up having a few like sexual abuses. When you have power yeah. over kids, you have somebody like oh, let's just t- let's take advantage, right? I don't know if it was sexual abuses. I think it was like Beating too far. Yeah, it was too yeah. far physically. So yeah, you're gonna have that. But the program when I was in it was just run really great. It was wow. a great great program. So I learned a lot with that. But you don't you outside of that program it's like you have you want to build your skill set i used to tell kids that when i taught it's like the whole goal is to build your skill set so that you're marketable 
and that you could make money in the economy. So it's like I had a lot of kids who weren't good in traditional school, but they had trades and that kind of a thing. It's like, yes, it's like build your uh, vocational education and get as many degrees or whatever certificates as you can it's going to make you so marketable when you go out in the world you don't have to like go to college you don't have to go to law school it's like just you just lock on to something and learn all you can about it to make yourself the most marketable in, you, in the economy and you could make a great living you could start your own business Long it's like it's better. endless yeah, yeah. uh did, did, did um i me and uh, ryan o'neill were driving from somewhere to somewhere we drove through michigan state and and my uh uh, somebody I know was going there, right? So we went and hung out and smoked weed in his dorm. You yeah, it's like frat house, whatever. It was yeah. fun. Told the pledges they came in, just go face, and they got to lay on their face. I'm like, who's this fucking forty-seven year old? Tell me face, but I loved it, dude. I, I was bully instantly. But we were like thinking about on the way on the when we left, we we're like, what would you tell these kids, these twenty-one year old kids, to actually about life? And we were both yeah. like, don't worry about your grades so much. Right. Get good grades. Yeah. But don't worry about it. Yeah. Because what you're actually getting here is like lifelong friendships. Yes. Which is way yeah. more important. That's the for experience. Your life. Yeah. That's the experience of college. Everybody's like, oh, there's people who go, college isn't important now. And it's it, the, the, unless you're specializing in something, I agree. It's not, if you're just getting a general liberal arts the degree, the education is not that important. The education right. is yeah. not, unless you're an engineer or teacher, unless you're like specifically going for something. But if you're just getting a liberal arts degree like I got, yeah, it's not like you can important? get a criminal justice degree. You can get that online now, I think, mm -hmm. you know, so it's not that. But the experience is what you were saying is the most important. Learn how to have a, a glass of water every third beer, you know, <laughs> shit like that, where you have to learn by yeah. experience. You can't do this while yeah. it's embarrassing. Learn your not college. to get arrested. Yeah. Yes. But I drug. have a great time and meet you meet a lot of people. You, you start to, you know, when you move away from your family, you start coming into your own as your own person. You don't really know who you are yeah. with your family because you're within the context of that family. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when you get on your own, you really find out who you are. And you find out how different everybody else was raised. Yeah. Like you don't realize like, oh, I thought everybody ate dinner at six at night. And if they didn't, they better have a good reason or they were going to get raped over the coals. <laughs> or you know what I mean? Or like made you know what, it, no I, that's what, not the way everybody was brought up yeah when you were when you saw these kids these troubled kids yeah you call them that did, would that do you see any of them like flourish outside of their fucking you know predisposed areas yeah yeah but it all starts from like home like what kind of some there's different levels of kids coming in yeah. but the kids who've had some kind of a basic structure and were just a little bit lost those kids are like sometimes do great because they needed yeah. some structure yeah and We're, then you have kids different level of likability you have kids who are like uh really really hard to like like because they're so antisocial and angry and so it's harder to like deal with them because you know we're all people so if i if if a kid comes in and you go look you have to sit down and we're gonna start this it's like no fuck you it's like all right now you know I'm trying to remain professional, but there's, you know, everybody's a human being. So it's right. like, now I got to deal with this kid in a certain way. It's not fun for me. And it's like, it's not, you know, but when you have kids who are more likable, it's easier to like, you know, help them and easier to teach them, obviously, you know, and I understand it's the what nature you, of these kids, but you, there's different levels of. Yeah. What did you teach? Yeah. I wonder, it's just like they're special, the attractives. There, if you're an attractive kid, you must get teachers wanting to help you more than if you're some fucking <laughs> buck tooth nerd. Yeah, well, if you're the whole thing is like attractive on the inside. If you're a good, you know, if you're like, and it's it's got to do with like how damaged you are from your childhood and all that yeah. too. But if you can, if you're, it's like anything. If you're charismatic and and get you can get people to like you, you can get much farther ahead regardless of your skill set. You know that just goes. That's in general in life. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know? But you'd have kids who are like real, like hard to deal with, and then you would have kids who are just like, I mean, you just loved them. They were awesome. They were great kids, and they're not without their bad moments. But you yeah. will be willing to accept those bad moments because they're just you. You feel that they're great kids. You ever see that in comedy over the years? You've been in it for as long as me, right around there. Mm. You see, I call them like they have it. And it, it might be looks, yeah, but it's something else. Like with Schumer and Gerard, it wasn't looks. It was like little sibling uh, vibe where yeah. people just wanted to help them. Yes. 
and and you see and it's like that's just this weird benefit they must be like that in school too where yeah. everybody just kind of wants you specifically yes. to succeed now yeah. that guy we want to help too but yeah. like how yeah. are you doing that's though? absolutely it's something from the inside it's like a, it's a charisma I think that kids have but it's like you know makes them very likable yeah what'd you teach I taught with these kinds of kids it's like they're just the, the administration or whatever school you're in or just like just have them learn what and then, and then you're like you're like yeah but what subjects like yeah it's less yeah. important about the subjects it's like if you could just keep them in the room it's not really and about have that. them learn wow. as, as like a, a kind of thing so when I was in teaching at a high school I developed my own program which is like a criminal justice program I, I taught them about the we're, courts and gluten the, the, the free law. also we're doing full keto <laughs> and justice I just brought my life into it we're gonna do a breathing <laughs> practice we're gonna do push-ups every day now i teach them about criminal justice because i figured i could teach them reading could teach them math do everything through this because they were interested in the criminal justice system a lot of times because a lot of them their parents would end up in the criminal justice system so it's it's and you could bring in like articles about stuff that happened like this person did this and got this much time and oh it's interesting it was an interesting it was an interesting way to teach all of the other subjects because we're reading we're writing, but we're doing it about like criminal activities. We talk about gangs. We would Damn, talk about like all kinds of other stuff. So it's interesting. And this is, you know, in these kids' wheelhouse. So it, it made it interesting to them. If you have a 50% hold on this block's um, <laughs> weed dealership yeah. and you murder three of the others, <laughs> right. they started at 10. Yeah. How many more do you have to murder That's or right. validate before you control the block? Yeah, we just did a math lesson right there. <laughs> we just did math. <laughs> But no, yeah, it's like you got to the big problem with these kids is like getting the getting your hooks into something that they're interested in because yeah. they're like, no, no, they're not interested in traditional subjects, which is why they struggle in traditional schools. So you try to bring something that they're all kind of interested in, which is the, um, you know, the criminal justice system. Crime is exciting. You know, that's what every kind of like besides love stories and movies about crime like are just like huge so it's like wow you know bring that in and teach everything through that so that's what i tried to do and i had good success because i was teaching in public schools and then would go back to the residential school that i worked at and i would teach the summers there while teach? i was getting my master's um oh really yeah regular kids no, no, they were also, re residential. I taught in uh, a couple different settings. The first one was at adjudicated school. The second one was a residential school on the mental health scale, so they couldn't function in uh, regular schools, but it was because of mental health issues, not criminal issues. You mean retarded or like? No, like they were thrown out of Philadelphia schools, but they what, had committed- Because of mental things? Yeah, because they, because they were either bipolar or schizophrenic or- um, Attention deficit, hyperactivity disorder, severely. Right. Um, ADD couldn't focus. Do you remember, got thrown uh, out of public schools. Metzger had a bit about autism. No. And he goes, we didn't have that when I was younger. Oh, yeah. He goes, but that, it definitely, now that we, it existed, we just didn't have it. Right, right. What we had was nerd. <laughs> <laughs> we just didn't know. Like, yeah. look at this nerd. He's not dodging the dodgeballs. We could just chuck it in his face. <laughs> and you're like, yeah, back right, then autism. it was just like crazy Mike. <laughs> yeah, he's nuts. He just had nicknames for him. <laughs> he likes to be held. Yeah. My chick I dated, she was she worked in like the autism right. thing, and she got bit before. Yeah, I got bit. You got bit. I got spit on. Which one's worse? The spit thing is the because a bit a bite is like getting a punch or something, so it's like kind of like it's a little. Uh, but being spit on, there's something about like because it would happen during a restraint. You would have to restrain these kids because how it played out, it would be like you know there would be a disruption in the class, and then the teacher would go, "Okay, you got to leave," and then the kid would go. I'm not leaving. Fuck you. Fuck you. I'm oh, not leaving. Wow. And that's then, that line. There's that one moment where right. it's like, damn it. Yeah. So now the whole class stops and the teacher goes, because once you say it as a teacher, you got to back it up or everybody's just going to run over you. Same thing when I was a door guy at the store. Yeah. And I'd be throwing something out and they'd be like, I didn't do it. My friends were talking. They were at the table with me. And if the manager ever, one time he was like, oh, okay, I'll let you back in. Like, you can't let him back in. Nah. I can, you can say I'm wrong and right. punish me, but you can't ever let him back in. Right. Then I have no control over this room. Nah. Just let me be wrong or how yeah. they got chucked. Yeah. And the thing about that is it's like at least they're gone after that night. In a, in a classroom, it's like it's every day. And they'll be back So they're not going to forget, yeah. Right. And they'll remember it. So it, it starts out where the kid goes, nah, fuck you, I'm not leaving. Because keep Can in mind- Can you imagine nah, fuck you to a teacher? It's so far removed from the way yeah. I was brought up. 
Yeah. It's nuts. I mean, me too. That's nuts. The worst we ever had was Max Maximilian. I forget his last name. She, she was, he was chewing gum in class, which that was like way over the line. Right. And she, the teacher was like, what are you chewing? And he, just, he was throwing himself out because he was going to say, he goes, my cud. And he started just disrespectful. He started yeah. walking to the door. She said, go to the prison because I'm going. But like, that was as bad as it. That was legendary for right, a few right, years. Right, 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 right. Fuck yeah. you! I'm not going. Yeah. No, I never saw that in my and where I was. I went to public schools, and that was not a thing when I was growing up at all. Oh. So, but it's it was an everyday thing when I was working in this wow. residential school. So, um, they it this is how it would go all the time. The teacher would there would be a disruption. The teacher goes, "You got to leave," and the kid would go, "Fuck you," and then it would be a standoff. And then I worked behavioral staff. Me and a, another person would have to go in the room. The kids would clear, and you go look. The teacher asked you to leave. You got to leave, and then they would go to you. They look. I'm not. They could either be nice about it and go look. I'm not. I'm not leaving. I don't want to leave because and, they must be like it's not you. It's this fucking bitch. Right. Yeah. Right. It's they're the bad person. I get. It's just your job, yeah. but you don't understand what yeah. happened before you got. Or here. they could be hostile towards you too and be like, "Fuck you. I'm not going. Fuck you. Fuck him. I'm not going. I'm not leaving." Uh. And then it's like you have to have a talk, and the talk goes like this: Look, they asked you to leave. You have to leave. And now you're going to leave by any means. You're going to have to, I'm going to have to escort you out. I don't want to put my hands on you. I will though. So you have to, if you put your hands on me, I'm going to fuck you up. It's like, look, at look, no, you're getting it all wrong. It's not personal for me. I don't have anything personal again. I, I actually like you. It's not personal. But the way the system goes, he wants you out of the class. You got to go out of the class. It's my job. I'm getting paid to do this. So it's not personal. I have to put my hands on you. you put your hands on me. I'm going to fuck you up. I'm going to call my cousin. My cousin can come up here and fuck you up. I'm like, oh, yeah, you could do whatever you got to do. What I'm saying is I have a job to do and I got to do it. Now, you can either work with me on that or you could fight me and it's going to be what it's going to be. And then would sometimes, that get through to people? sometimes it would get through and sometimes it would be nasty and we'd have to go down to the ground. I mean, but the whole you, thing, you and were then, a wrestler, so yeah. you must have been able to take these kids. Take them down, but these are like 13 to 18 year olds, so it's not that easy. you know. And plus, people and don't yeah, realize- If it's 17 and a half years old, yeah. they're stronger than Strong. you. Strong, and girls too. People are like, oh, girls is like, I see no, 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 no. If you do not secure about. limbs, yeah. a girl will take your eye out, man, Jesus. with their nails. Yeah, it's not it's not pleasant. The whole thing's not pleasant. And then when you're with a person, another person, you got to secure the limbs at the same time because if you don't, and a limb gets free in the flail, there, it could really fuck wow. you up. Yeah, take it, take another piece of my eye now, baby. <laughs> yeah, man, that's rough. I had a, a girl scratch me across my face, almost in my eye, and because we didn't the other person didn't secure a limb at the same time wow. and yeah it was bad so it's like secure the secure limb. the limbs yeah because it's like there people start flailing it's out of control but as the re person restraining you got to be in control you got to be in control and you got to use you know enough force you got to that's the thing about the police and all this stuff which yeah. i get it you know i get the um um Issue. abuse and the overuse oh, yeah. of force and all that stuff i get it but what the common person doesn't understand in a restraint situation is you have to overpower the person so it looks bad it looks like it, you have to overpower the person right. though it's safer if you overpower the person overpower them hard yes yeah. to get to the ground and then when you get to the ground then it's like okay then you start talking to them and de-escalating them because it's the rough like stuff football, is over like hey let's not run up the score I'm like no no you're up three points this, you need to get <laughs> yeah. you need to get it over nine yes you need to make sure you're yeah, over that you need to make sure point. because yeah. if it goes out of control then it's dangerous for everybody wow yeah so you bring them to the ground and then when when you bring them to the ground, it's not pleasant because they're few, now they're like they're, they're either saying doing one or two things like my arm hurts, my arm hurts, my arm hurts. So they go from talking to you like sometimes like um like uh, Tupac like I'm gonna fuck you up, I'm gonna kill you, and then you bring it to the ground. They're like my arm, my arm, my it, it immediately goes to that. So you go okay, I'm gonna you you only use necessary force to restrain so you all right i'm gonna ease up on your arm but you gotta stop struggling you gotta do your part you gotta stop struggling and then you de-escalate them that way and then you like pull off the gas a little yeah and, and then if they go harder then you gotta go back yeah you in. gotta go back it's like look look man i'm calm I'm, I'm i'm easing up you gotta do your part though you gotta relax because the thing about that is like you're not taking them to a cell like you have to deal with them so after you bring them to the ground you you're trying to de-escalate them like look 
we let's just come get out of the room. Yeah, we have to get out of the room. Jesus. Yeah, so you got to bring them back down. Like, look, I, you know, you start talking to them like a person. Like, look, I'm a, and as long as it takes, as long as this takes, if you stop struggling, I'm going to stop. I'm going to ease up. So let's do it together. Let's work together. And then you get them up, you get the, and then you walk out of the room, hopefully, which is how it usually happened, because they yeah. got that burst of adrenaline. Because when it's a standoff, there's adrenaline everywhere. And then once there's a confrontation, a physical confrontation, I feel like the adrenaline drops and they're de-escalated and then you can get up and walk out of the room, which is what you wanted to do in the, in the first, first place. place. You didn't want to have a physical confrontation as staff. Yeah, like, come on, man. Yeah. Uh, did, did you? That's a lot of that was yeah. like, come on, man, let's not do this. Let's not do this. And if they just go, no, fuck you. I'm doing it. We're, you, I'm not fucking leaving. It's like, and keep in mind, it was a co-ed school, so there's girls around. Then that, or the girls, there's guys around. They don't want to look like they're backing down. Well, that's in front the thing of their too. Peers. It's emasculating to their peers, either to get taken down or to just to go willingly. If somebody's like, you have to. It's almost like I can see an angle where they're like, I'd rather you beat me up to make me go. Right. It'll be. It'll save me face. Right. If this big fucking adult yeah. makes me go, it's yeah. cooler than me yeah. going fine. Yeah. And you look defiant. Right. You know what I mean? Like you're defiant throughout. So you take the kid down and hopefully de-escalate them and get them back up and then walk to a timeout room. Now, did you, well, okay, let's do our dates real quick, but I want to ask if you took it personally ever, but we'll yeah. come right back to that. Microdosing is an important part of the drug community. Yeah, it's an exciting new feature that uh, mushrooms are offering you and acids are offering you. What I've heard is people in the tech world will uh, microdose acid and it helps them have these uh, massive startups. Let's assume Facebook was not started that way, but let's assume many of the other companies that Facebook bought out or aggressively took over uh, were started by uh, SID heads, but they're microdosing it, which means you take below the ethical, ethical amount of the drug. Ethical is a word that I learned when talking about microdosing mushrooms. So it doesn't get you fucked up. And now it's THC. You can microdose THC. Yeah, I just heard about it from these people at microdose.com. Uh, Use microdose.com, promo code Ari at checkout. You get 30% off your first order and free shipping. That's the biggest discount I believe anyone has given. Uh, that sponsored me. So that means they know that you're going to get hooked. That's how it works. As a Jew, I can talk about this. And as a drug head, uh, pothead, for many, many decades, I can tell you about it too. Um, they'll want to get you hooked by giving you quality products and you'll be back. 30% off and free shipping. That's pretty sweet. You're paying 70 and no shipping if you're making a hundred dollars. Paying seven and no shipping if you get ten dollars worth. Why would you get ten dollars worth though? You're gonna go for it, go for it. So you do is you get a steady stream of THC working in your body, and then it just like changes you slightly, but you don't get high. That's below the ethical amount. You don't get fucked up, but it starts to uh, sex can be better on it. Uh, uh, um, you laugh more, have a good time. You're able to handle your girlfriend and her dumb fucking stories that start way too early. Hey, we've all been there. You're like, uh, is this even part of the story? You're like, so you're at the mall. Is this part of the thing that I had to hear about? And then, like, wh why did you tell me about your lunch with Sarah? What does this have to do with I, I You got to have faith in them. Like, I, you got to uh, pull it all together. And then at the end, once again, it doesn't pull all together. And then at some point, you go to the next story, and you're like, I know this isn't going to be good either. But if microdose.com, use promo code sorry for that deep discount, um, you'll maybe be able to handle it. I say maybe because you can't guarantee that. It depends how, you know, how boring your girlfriend's stories are. Um, microdose is available nationwide. That's nice. To learn more about microdosing THC, go to microdose.com and use the code ARI to get free shipping and 30% off your first order. Links can be found in the show description. But again, that's microdose.com. Promo code ARI. Now go get not fucked up. Just keep taking a little bit. It'd be like taking like a dipping your finger in whiskey. And, and one like that every day. You're never going to get drunk. <laughs> Why would you do that? Do it with THC. Microdose.com. Promo code Ari. Bye. So what do you got? This is coming up Monday. So like, what do you got? Um, Besides your new special out, new special. The Attractives, on YouTube right now. You should all go see it. The important thing is uh, my Sean social Zanies. media, at Comic Mike V on all social media platforms, at Comic Mike V. My podcast is uh, Mike Vecchio Investigates iTunes, yeah. it's uh, we shoot at Gas Digital. It's iTunes and um, on YouTube also. I could use followers. It's a fake investigatory show. We're very fake about investigating, <laughs> and we also talk down to our listeners, which is fun because it's not just your normal comic hang. We will talk down to you, and we fake investigate 
um, news stories. That's a good thing. Actually, legitimately, people are at some point bored of the podcast you're listening to. Yeah. I get it. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and they're looking for new ones. So yeah. Mike V investigates. Mike Vecchione it? investigates. Mike Vecchione investigates on iTunes and um, also on YouTube. Yeah. And for dates, MikeVecchione.com. But I will be in uh, Comedy on State this weekend. Madison. Yeah. Sick. Madison. Wait, this comes out Monday? Monday. Okay, I, I was already there. <laughs> I was it. It was great. Oh what my a cool god, dreamer, what a great, right? what a great. It was so cool. <laughs> the girls and are then, awesome. uh, but come and see me at um, Side Splitters in Tampa, one of my favorite clubs in the country. Love that spot. It's awesome. I just started going there. I went for Mark Norman's bachelor party. <sighs> yeah. and I was like, I'm switching clubs, and he was like, We'd love to have you. And then it I was, did a headline week. Ah, uh, it was awesome. Yeah, it's cool. It's yeah. cool. It's in a nice part of town. It's not in like. God, I love the people in Tampa. We we're just talking about this on Bonfire. They're like, some of the coolest people, the people in the people world. Are, it is so. It's just like I grew. There's no pretension to them. No. And I went to I went to high school in Boca Raton. I graduated high school in Boca Raton, Trash, Florida, which yeah. I loved. Great. I mean, I never Florida would have Tyrese. taken anything back. Yeah, I, I um, <laughs> my joke is like everybody retires when they're six, and they're yeah. taking doing shuffleboard and taking medication. Yeah. No, it's the it was the best. But there's something about that West Coast, that Tampa area that I it, it just feels like all the people from New York, Philly and Boston go to the East Coast and then more Midwest it has more of a Midwestern vibe right. on yes, that it West does. Coast. It does. Cause like Miami is Miami. Yeah. And then West Palm or Fort Lauderdale is like a more chill version of it. But they're all West yes. East Coast versions. You're yeah. right. Tampa's Midwest. Yes. It's, it's more laid back. More laid back. And I was really surprised. It's not like they're right wing or left wing. They was like, oh dude, we're, just, we're playing golf. Yeah. It doesn't really talk about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's really how great the people are there. Yeah. And then what else you got? Tampa. Oh, yeah, Tampa. And then I'm at Moon Tower in April. In Austin. Great. In Austin. I'm sure yeah. there a bunch of podcasts there. I love yeah. Moon Tower. I love Austin. You got to go by the Comedy Mothership. Say hi. Uh, I'm going to be in yeah. Zurich on tomorrow, I guess, Tuesday. Wow. This comes out um, uh, at a show. Um, and then uh, a- April, I got at the end of April, the 27th, 28th, and 30th, I got uh, uh, Glasgow, London, Manchester. And then in May, I go to uh, Europe for... Amsterdam, Stockholm, Berlin, Vienna, Ljubljana, um, Cluj Nabajoka, Bucharest, and Athens. Uh, finishing up May sixteenth in Athens and get tickets. Um, yeah, and I'll be at the Comedy Mothership on uh, April fourth doing a storytelling show. But those are my dates. That's awesome. And um, you know, Nate, our friend Nate Bargazzi just came from Europe. I went to Nashville. He's going to uh, his. Australia he now too. He just came from Europe. Yeah, he's going to Australia, but he just came. He just came from Europe, so um, especially Amsterdam. Just call, call him about the what to do and stuff. Oh yeah, he's got great. Stuff. I mean, I've been a bunch. I love Amsterdam. Yeah. I, I I will say that I, I I looked at like some tour schedules. I was looking at Segura's to see if we overlap because he's yeah. around the same time, and I'm like, maybe we can even if we're an hour away, like let's take a train yeah. and meet up. And yeah, do some fucking fun shit. You know, absolutely. It just is not going to work out. It's not even yeah. close. But I love. You're really good about that. You're really good about going somewhere and be like, "Oh, who else is around?" Uh, yeah, that's great. Especially somewhere like that. Yeah, it's like yeah. There's some shit to do out yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, nice a lot to of have fun. A real friend. That's a lot of fun. But, uh, but one of the best times. I, it still comes yeah. up on my phone. What? The pictures of when we went to Vegas and then we went to the um, gangster museum. We went no. to the gangster museum together, but then we went to the rock. Cl- we went to rock climbing and all that stuff. You're like, look, if you can hang an extra few days, Zion. Zion. Yeah, and it was. Unbelievable! It was I remember that so was hard for fun, you. Fun, man. It was hard for you to do. It. Yeah, I know. I know because I'm like, oh, let me get back to what's like. No, no, no. This is gonna be fun. It's like, dude, that the, the st- I've never seen stars like that. That was unbelievable. It was so clear. It was so clear. So and dark clear. everywhere. Yeah, and just like, wow. I remember I sent you a video one time when we were like a stop, like we were eating at some restaurant at a at at, at a stop together, and uh, we all stopped to play horseshoes outside, and there was a big wagon, a, um, a statue of a wagon, and a person like a pioneer. Yeah. And you, and I sent it to you. You're like, what? You have this? What is this from? It's like I got video. I got video <laughs> from that entire trip, man. Yeah. It was really a great time. It was so cool. You, me, Tolomon. <laughs> list yes and, was, and, and and whoever else is with us like had to go back to do their yeah yeah mark, careers. mark, mark and veter veter and it was just and like more, yeah. oh dude dude that was, should be coming it was a blast i'm i do not regret doing that so anything you say where it's like even if it's out of my wheelhouse it's like hey um if you're here it. let's go skiing it's like i've never skied before but i i I, it's really yeah <laughs> i love that yeah i'll give it a shot uh, you did the other one i really was impressed with too was yeah. china Oh, China was unreal. unreal. It was one of the greatest experiences of my life. And I was blown away by Singapore, man. How great Singapore was. 
Yeah. But I got to say, like, the funniest thing, before I went there, I was yeah. talking to you about it, and you go, look, if they tell you not to say something, do not say it. <laughs> He goes, you go, and this is me telling you, this is me telling you not to say it, okay? He's like, they are not playing games over there. They will detain. And you know what? They shut that Shanghai room they down. shut it down. Yeah. It's yeah. really something, though. Never made it to Singapore. I mean, Singapore blew Shanghai me away. was great. Singapore so much. Yeah, do not fuck with that. I was I was on uh, Rogan's podcast, me, Shane, and Mark. We were doing some mushrooms. Yeah. And then there were some shots of us taking the mushrooms. And then Joe's like, I don't know, should we even like cut that out or use the other shots? I mean, Jamie has to go back and re-edit. Yeah. And I was like, Joe, I think you should, as big as you are, I think you should cut around it. You think so? I'm like, and remember, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> that's me. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> fuck the government. Who gives a shit? I'm saying. Yeah. The safety last guy is yeah, saying, cut yeah, around yeah, that. Yeah. He goes, let's cut around <laughs> it. Let's cut around it. That's great. <laughs> and I was like, and by the way, you should not have just drinking that. Um, <laughs> um, uh, yeah, that was a lot. I mean, how was that? What I can't imagine, like, uh, I've done mushrooms a lot. You can oh, it. yeah, you can handle it. Gets you quiet, but it's like being drunk. Oh, but is it the same every time you do it, or is no. it different experiences? Mushrooms decide. Wow, mushrooms decide how heavy yeah. it's gonna be. You and can to do that it, on a podcast is really something, man. It really shows it's funny because it's like this massive platform. The platform. Yeah, yeah. We're talking about publicist because right. he's got a new special out called uh, The Attractives right now on YouTube. And sometimes you got to get a publicist to help get the word out. Right. And so I talk to my, I'm friends with my publicist. And um, and I use him over the years. You know, I'll use him for when I have to promote something and not right. at all. Or if I suddenly start getting death threats while I'm on a plane, <laughs> he'll be like, hey, I'm going back on. <laughs> <laughs> just like you know we'll figure out the money later i'm going back home um, um yeah it's so great found my webmaster's like let's take this person off this person <laughs> off they're getting threats by by electric nearby uh. you but um um we were he was like we in the in the publicity game right there's the biggest thing that we can get our clients our writers or musicians or comp whatever and we have no in to get that so if you can get on broken, that's the thing. We, yeah, we, yeah. We're we powerless. Yeah, yeah. We try, but it's right. really not up to us. Right, right. And now, me and Shane and Mark are on this massive platform. Yeah. And like, And let's fuck it off. Let's just do inebriants. That's great. And not take it seriously. That's how it calm it's become. That's great. Yeah, it really is yeah. nice. Yeah, and I'm sure the more you do it, the easier Yeah, the easier it, it is. Becomes. Yeah. And when we started, I mean, at least when I started, it was nothing. Yeah, so yeah. So it became Yeah, you start from the you. beginning, yeah. 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 Same with our friendships, too. It's like- right. Who's this fucking loser from news radio? <laughs> it's like you know, <laughs> this former actor. <laughs> it's like a lot easier. But friends. you were friends. You were friends with him before all that. Yeah. Right. Right after news radio. Yeah. Before Fear Factor, I remember right. telling us about this new show. Because it's weird. We're sicking dogs on people. I'm like what? <laughs> you mean on a TV? Yeah. He's like it's weird. It's cr-. Anyway, yeah. That's great, man. Did the kid? Did you ever like when they're fighting back? Did you ever take it personal? Yeah, it's hard not to take it's it personal because you're walking. You know, we all have our own lives. Like you're getting up, you're having breakfast. I was living with my girl at the time. It's like she had her. So you have your own issues. But when you go in, it's like uh, it just depends what kind of day this is going to be. But you know, you're going to have those confrontations every day. So you're you're prepared for it mentally, and you realize it's like oh, these kids. Because when a kid comes in, the psychologist comes in and reads their backstory, and a lot of their backstories would make you cry. Really? I mean, just cry. Like man. what kind of stuff? Like a kid was um, held in a basement and um, chained up and fed dog food. That was one of the things. It was wow. like he was fed dog food and what? kept in a basement until like human services came, child uh, protective services came in and removed him from the home. And then the but dog the, finally got his food? The dog finally got <laughs> the dog. so mean. But I mean, that's, that's okay. the kind yeah, of- <laughs> That would never happen to you. I would, buy, I would, the kind I would of, get a separate dog food for you. But that's the kind of stories that- would come at and you were like, oh man, it's just like, wow. how could a person do this to another person, man? And when then that kid is going, fuck you, yeah. it's like, I yeah, 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 yeah. It. It's like, it. it gives a back. It doesn't, ex- you know, you're still a person and you're still feeling so, but you understand the backdrop of what you're dealing with then, you know? But yes, it's hard when someone like bites you or spits on you or something. I mean, your just initial reaction is, because if, if that was to happen just like, on the street, even though it's in a setting where it's like crazy things happen and you expect that it and it's your job, it's still like you have the initial reaction to be like, what's up? Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Right. Yeah. 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 It's hard. So hard in New York. And it's on the the very border of always just suddenly fighting. 
Yeah. It's like uh, you're walking past someone in the street and then you put your head down, you don't look. But if they just hip checked you, yeah. it's on. And we're all yeah. hoping that no one calls anyone. Right. None of us want the fight. Right. But you have to be ready to fight. It's crazy right. how we live. It is crazy how we live. And it's like, I was always jealous because I overthink everything mm-hmm. too, you know? But I love the guys who just like, um, don't think twice about that. They just go, oh, oh okay. <laughs> they just go, you know, there's guys like that who just are re- always like down for the w- whatever. It's like, oh, you, okay, well, this is easy now. Yeah. It's easy. The decision's already made. Yeah, you started this. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's like whatever happens in this confrontation, it's got to be now. It's got to go to this level now. Wow. So yeah, yeah. But it's like it's like um, it does make I, and and as we're raised is to to not fight, right? So if somebody's like, "I fuck you," you're like, "You're natural." If you had time to think, we'll yeah, be like, "Ugh, let me get out of here." Yeah, but your emotions are like, "Let me fight you back." Right, they draw you into a place that you right, that right, not you. Yeah, they draw you into because you're place. not even mad at this guy. You didn't yeah. even know he existed. Right, ten seconds ago. Right. And so these kids must be the these same. These kids way. is the same. It's, it's but you're like you keep in mind like, hey, this is my job, and I have to be professional and all this stuff. And and you 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 so you walk in. It's not as the same because you're walking into the situation knowing that. But um, and then and then afterwards, a lot of the kids are like apologetic. Some are not, mm-hmm. but some some are apologetic and you know want to get back into the program it's hard because it's a school too not no kids want to go to school but these kids especially good point but it's um you got to you know there has to be structure and there has to be discipline did you train for this or do they just throw you in they throw you in they give you a little bit of training but the restraint the restraint training was a at the time it was a basket hold so you would you would hold each hand it was like a basket like this you would hold their hands this way their hands would be crossed or yours would theirs so they couldn't do much. Right. right. Can't yeah, forward. you can't go forward and and, and, then go. and yeah. So to prevent them from uh and then t- and then somebody so would, would you do someone would be on their legs. Hand, so I'm like, I'm here. Yeah, but I would be behind you. Oh, you'd be behind yeah, you. yeah, behind oh. you, and then I would grab from the backside. It's kind of like in wrestling where it's like two. You, you're grabbing, but we would do a two on one. But you grab so the hands here, here. How did you cross them? Or did you grab over, over, and then pull? Grab your wrists here, and then. And then pull, okay. Yeah, like pull them, and then somebody would be on your. Le- you at least need two people to restrain. Yeah. Do you have to take kids out, like drag, like by the legs and by the arms, dragged out? Yeah, but you would have to do it. Um, you would take them to the ground and then try to de-escalate them up, and but you and then clear the room. You would not clear. You, you get would have out to, of the room. Yeah, yeah. Well, the, everybody else would have to get out of the room. Really? Yeah. Did it be like everybody in the hallway where we hear everybody us? in the hall because you don't want you know you you I'm don't innocent. want a situation where a kid that's my friend jumping in and you need other staff to like oh, police fuck, that fuck. yeah that's my friend yeah, that's my girlfriend like, these are all it's like possible enemies yes because it's a, it's a it's a volatile situation but it's necessary that if a kid is being defiant and the teacher decides to have them get out of the room that you need to get them out of the room because the. It, the class needs to continue right you're delaying and, and you want to yeah and you want to send the message like you know the biggest thing with these kinds of kids and any kind of kids is uh uh severity and consistency you want to do it consistently and with the same amount of severity the least <sighs> amount the least amount of resistance to get what you want so if you want the kid to leave you using the least amount of resistance in order to get what you want damn yeah god damn yeah so it was it was a tough job but then it was also rewarding in the sense that you would see some of these kids like do better and really yeah yeah yeah. Did yeah. you ever follow the kids afterwards? Not in the residential, but in, in in teaching in a I taught in a bunch of different settings at a public high school. Man, it was really something. Like I went into I taught in a after uh, the residential school I taught in a city school in Philly, Northeast mm-hmm. Philly, and then I taught in a, a working class suburb. Upper Darby, and then I taught in a affluent, more affluent place, Garnet Valley, and uh, so I got a picture of all these communities. And the one I taught was a high school. The last one, it was a uh, more affluent, and the kids just didn't feel like they really belonged there because it was like a really blue ribbon school, and these kids kind of didn't fit in. And I, and the first year I taught there, I had a bond with um, a few of the kids, and it was, and they were graduating. They were like 17, 18 years old. And it was unbelievable, man. They did, were. Did they stay in touch? Like we no stayed in touch with them. I said really? after they graduate, I went to their graduation. I would. I, w- I remember wow, when I first moved to New York, I stayed in touch with them, and I would go back and have dinner with them. 
I would go back and have dinner with them. I would hang out with them as adults. Really? And they and and uh, yeah, they would uh, they they left a message on my uh, at right after graduation. They called. They had my. I gave my phone number. They left a message on. Uh, they went out and celebrated, and, and it was like three in the morning. They left a message like, "Mr. Vec, we love you. We love you, Mr. <laughs> Vec. We love you." Yeah, yeah. And they would. They after they graduated, they they would do that once in a while. One time, I picked up. It was like two or three in the morning. They're like, "Oh, Mr. Vec." I'm like, "Are you being safe? Are you being like like that like, like, like a dad?" They're like, "Yeah, we're <laughs> being safe. We're home. We just wanted to call. They would all out together. Wow. We just wanted to call and tell you that we love you." And I go, "Okay, guys, be safe." And they go, "You got to say it back." <laughs> I go, "What?" They go, "You got you to tell us you love us. You got to tell us you love us." I go, "I love you guys." And they're like, "All right, good night." They wouldn't hang up the phone <laughs> until I told them that I loved them back. That's it was really, great. really That's beautiful. Great. Man. Really That's beautiful. That's really awesome. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, I was wondering, like, it's a, yeah, it's like you can keep up with them and find joy in their. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I reached out to a college teacher. 15 years ago, 10, 15 years ago, Dr. Kolker, Robert Kolker. Loved him. To film, film like analysis teacher. Yeah. At Maryland, I think he switched to Georgia Tech and found him. Asked him a question about something like blue, not Blue Velvet, Mulholland Drive, maybe or something like that. Talked a little like, "What are you up to?" I'm a stand up comedian. He's like, "Oh, that's weird." But just like, I love, I love the idea of like staying in touch with these. Yeah, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If they, because they have an effect on your life, and you don't realize it because you're going through it every day. And with with these kids, these behavioral emotional kids, it can be very difficult day to day just getting stuff done but once you're out of it and they're on their way to whatever they want to do it's it can be really good yeah but like you kind of like i would assume you take some joy like i i made that yeah you know i had an effect i just did a show in um pennsylvania and i had a kid come out with his wife who i taught wow yeah he came out to the show and um a couple of kids have come out to shows wow you know because this is you know they knew I was doing stand up, but it was before YouTube and all this stuff, so you couldn't get into a problem. You know, it was just like it was kind of you could live in a separate world of doing stand up. It's clean. I as just you started stand up, but it's still you you would get you couldn't be a teacher in this. Uh maybe if you were completely clean. I mean a year level. Yeah, I'm yeah. a I'm offensive. You're you're just funny. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but like I, there's no way for me. Yeah. But even with like you, yeah, I'd still be like someone would get you fired. Something. Yeah, there'd be one thing right. you made fun of the people. On yes, yes, my, yeah. My kid well, it's not the stand-up, with... but even podcasting now, it would be like, yeah, you, you did this, you said this, somebody dug this up. Legit. Oh, actually, being on this podcast yeah. would get you fired. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't even say anything <laughs> by association with the devil. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the devil. <laughs> the, most, the most evil man in comedy. Ari Shafir is the most <laughs> evil man in comedy. I'm gonna did watch you, it right did after you this watch podcast. Any of that video. I'm not gonna watch it because they pulled it up on Bonfire. But oh uh, my god, they pulled it up on Bonfire. But I'm like, they're like. I Jay because Jay was like I can't wait to watch it. I'm like I can't wait to watch this. I, I, I have not watched. Bobby was telling me a little about it, and then I finally watched it uh, yesterday. I, yeah. I told you I wrote a comment saying this is the, my favorite thing I've seen all year. This is so fucking funny. Um, and then I wrote another comment saying uh, please support this channel. Like, yeah. Support, and they took down the first comment. <laughs> they deleted the one that saying that me saying I liked it. Oh it's so God. fucking funny. Because that's what the devil kind of does. From what I've learned about the devil, uh -huh. the devil always shows up friendly. Me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, You're yeah. the most evil man in comedy. I'm the most evil you know, man you would comedy. think it's like you would come with all this hate, but that's not how true <laughs> evil works. True <laughs> evil that's shows up as a friend. Face. Yeah. With I got a my fiddle over there. God. Yeah. <laughs> The most evil man in comedy. <laughs> You're the most evil man in comedy with the biggest heart. Is that possible? Is that you it, could have the biggest heart, not, but you're the most evil? It's not a real evil? documentary. It's like, well, we have to also examine this other thing where everyone seems to say they love him. So wh what is that about? Like, nah, we're not going to face that part of it. <laughs> yeah. We're not going to. Yeah. Forget that part of it. <laughs> it's so funny hearing new people come to like, what the fuck? And it's like. You, what you did to Bobby Lee? I'm like, in our 20s, what? <laughs> and he's like, they're all like, it just happened to them right now. Oh they just yeah. heard about it. Yeah, that's the thing. It happens to you right now. Yeah. That's the delay of um, <laughs> the most evil man. I can't wait. I'm going to have my popcorn ready for it. <laughs> I just I, was accused of legitimate rape. I want to see who you really are. No, nope, you'll find out. Okay. At the most evil man in comedy. <laughs> um, 
Oh, what was I going to say about this teaching shit now? What, what were the other teachers like? Had they given up? Oh, uh, you know what? It, oh, it's nine. at the residential school. It was all young because you can't you burn out so fast. Yeah, you can. So it was all young. So we'd go out to happy hours and drink afterwards, and we would just get hammered. And it was like really fun, man. Really like a because when you're doing it's like playing oh, a contact all, you're, sport you're together. Mid twenties, living life. Yeah, and you you're like we're all the kind of the same age, and it's like restraining and being in that kind of a. Uh, fire every day yeah. is like uh, it's like playing a contact sport together where it's like you're bonded because it's like I got your back you got my back we you know we love these kids and we're wow. trying to do the best we can for them but if things get bad I it's like we go, yeah I gotta know that you can secure a limb I can secure a limb <laughs> and that we got each other's back because if you don't then it's like uh, things can get really ugly for everyone dude you've been to shows where teachers show up yes and especially special ed teachers nobody drinks harder yes nurses yeah. special ed teachers yeah, yeah, yeah. we go general. hard man we go hard in the paint when they're off they're off they're off and uh and they have like they're facing that it's just a level of frustration that you're dealing with every day and not just with the kids the kids it's like you can handle that it's like but it's like you have these administrators who don't get it and then you have parents who also kind of don't yeah, get with it. the parents what are they like sometimes they're real supportive and good but other times they're like oh yeah they're just they're just um what do you call delusional about what the issue is you know it's like oh no no no, you're not you're not getting it at all because sometimes like, they're not present right you don't get a fucked up kid from an awesome leader right right you know yeah there was this thing a few years ago about like i don't i just saw it on the news like i don't understand um why all uh why parents can't have teacher cell phone numbers like you should have the teacher's cell phone number it's like no because uh, a lot of these parents are unstable. Yeah, you're they thinking would just be of texting you, you. As, what yeah, you would be as a right, parent, right? Right. But it's right. It's like yeah. no, I, no. I mean, I mean, it's, my kid said you do this to him in class. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna come a, down there. A whole bunch but, of that no. too. Yeah. So I don't know. It depends. But there was one thing. Is like I think it was in 2015 because I remember my father was passing away at the time. So I was what me and my mother were watching. My mother was a teacher for 40 years. Whoa. Yeah. So we're watching this thing on TV where it was like. This girl refused to leave a class, and um, the teacher was like, you, you gotta leave, you gotta leave, and she was like, fuck you, I'm not leaving. This is a, I think it's a public school. I think, I'm pretty, it was a public school. So the teacher goes, uh, he goes, the, she goes, fuck you, I'm not leaving. And the teacher is afraid to like do anything about it because she doesn't want to risk her job. So she goes and gets the principal, and the principal comes in and goes, you gotta go, and then and the kid goes, no, fuck you, I'm not leaving. And, and then, so the principal, doesn't want to do anything because the principal doesn't want the suit the school to get sued. So the principal grabs a cop, and the cop is like, um, um, a football coach. You know, the girl is black. That everybody, I guess, the teacher and the principal are white, and the cop who comes in is white. And so they go, okay, you gotta. The cop goes, you gotta leave. This is the third guy person now, and she goes, no, I'm not leaving. And so the cop like pulls her out of the chair. And it looks ugly. The the video looks ugly. Yeah. It does look ugly. Pulls her out of because she's holding onto the chair, and he pulls her out of the chair and gets her out of the room. And this video gets released, and it's just like, I mean, Brutality. the backlash about it and the racial element. It's like, I don't know, dude. I, I and it turns out that the the cop was a football coach, and like really, he got fired. And it just, I don't know what you do in that situation. Then I guess the girl just runs the school at that point. Do you just let her? Stay there, and she just dictates what's going to happen. I mean, a lot in of people school. say no, but there's another way to do it. But like, and what is it? And in the moment, what is it? I, I don't. It's know. not another way to do it. I mean, the so girl just I mean, dictates to what's going to. Like when I was a dork at the store, if someone refused to leave, then it's like, oh, then you're now you're trespassing on our property, right. and we have to call the police to right. do it. Right. And if they say no, the cop, I guess, would then be like, I'm, I, here's a moment I can, I'm allowed to use force. To get you out of someone's property, it has to stop somewhere. It Someone, somebody, I mean, has to go. Okay, you gotta move, and then they go, no, 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 three, to three different. Times. Meanwhile, everybody's talking about education. It's like these kids are missing class. This is going on for an hour now. Yeah, you know what I mean. And they're and they're missing this class. Well, at home, because at, of this ugly the anger. All they see is this video, and they go, "What the right. fuck?" They don't. See, right. They'll see a little girl crying because yeah. her dad's gone. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, no, her dad's raped seven people. He's yeah. in jail. And you're like, oh, I didn't know that part. Yeah. It's it's always like the thing right now where it's just like, but it it was uh it was an ugly. I remember feeling Damn. that because I used to do that kind of a thing. Like they'd have to leave the class, and you know you would have to you would have to pull them out of the restrain them, and then 
pull them out of the class. But for this to happen in a public school like that, it's like the guy got fired, everybody overreacted, and it's like, yeah, I don't know. What's the, tell me a good alternative to that where it's a functional within the system where a kid can just go fuck you to the teacher, which is, you can't have that. You can't. You can't have a kid go fuck you but to you the teacher. But you have to have a contingency plan. Yeah. Like when they will do that, because they will, what are we going to do? It's not shoot them. Right. Now, I mean, I got into an argument in my master's, uh, one of my master's classes, because there was a uh, uh, another student who was a teacher. We were all like working in the field at the time. And he was like, you never put your hands on the kids. You call the cops. It's like, no, no, no I have to. I have to because I'm the, the population I'm dealing with. Right. Otherwise, if, if I say something, I say, don't do that. And they go, they go, no, I'm going to do that. And I don't physically do something. Then. Everybody's. All order is out the window. Yeah. You know, I'd have to call the cops every fucking day then. Yeah. So it's like they don't understand the functional was, nature of how things have to go. And also, if I tell you to do something and you tell me to fuck off and I call a cop, it's like the, I have no status. They, they're going to respect the cop, but they're yeah. not going to respect, they're going to respect whoever makes them Just do what they're supposed the to do. Yeah. By yeah. the time the cop gets here, I'll sit down. It won't be an issue. Yeah. One time I was at TSA and, and I just hate them so much and. It's like, you know, they'll steal like a lighter one. They can't have this. I'm like, if I didn't have it in my pocket, if I had it in my bag, you wouldn't have found it. Can I just have my lighter? Right. Then I'm going to land and I'm not going to have, it's a cigar lighter. I'm not going to have one, please. Oh, yeah. And they're like, no. I'm like, Ugh. like you can go check. I'm like, sure. I'll just, I'll go back out of security. I'll go check a lighter and it'll what, yeah. just write my name on it. What do yeah, you, yeah, yeah. and they just, they don't care. And just like, it makes me so mad. And then sometimes anyway, they were like, take your shoes off. And I used to like not comply. I'm like, no, I have a disease. And like, what is it? I'm like, you can't ask that. Whatever. Just like, and then one time they were like, the thing went off. You got to take your shoes off. I'm like, no, I can't. I'm, I'm hurt. And they're like, no, you got, I'm like, my doctor told me not to. And they're like, well, the thing went off. I'm like, can we go it again? They're like, nah, we don't go again. And I'm like, can I just leave? I was thinking with my parents. I was headed back to New York or LA. And they're like, what do you mean? I'm like, what if I'm like, I don't want to do this. I just want to go home. I'm not going to get on the plane. I'm going to go home. Like, can't do that. I'm like, am I being detained? Are you detaining right, right, me? Right. Why can't I right, leave? Right. I get not going through to the, right. And then I'm just, I had an hour. So I'm like, let me have some fun with it, you yeah. know? And then at some point, like, got it. So I'm like, do you want us to call the cops? And for a second, I was like, actually, yeah. Let's see what the legal <laughs> legal rules are in this. I know I haven't done anything yeah. illegal yet. The right. worst he's going to do is make me take my shoe off. Right. Yeah, call the cops. Let's, 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 and they're like, really? I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to jail yet. And it was just fun. The cop was just like, oh. oh yeah, yeah. Come on, dude. Yeah. Can please just take it off. Right. It was like what your job yeah. was. And I was like, no. Nah. <laughs> yeah because the cop is not in it the way that the person the person having that confrontation is emotionally caught up in it yeah and they're like yeah you're gonna now you're gonna see the, yeah, because the cop. they're like why can't you take your shoe off I'm yeah. like because I don't wanna shut up and they're like you'll take it off and I'm like oh now you're the Starbucks employee taking power yeah 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 um was this anything like what was that gang was it Gangster's Paradise no what was the movie called with, with, with... Uh, Michelle Pfeiffer and Coolio yeah I was think it, it was Gangster's Paradise the song was Gangster's yeah. Paradise uh, it, was, it was called something else. Not higher learning. Um, God, I don't know. Was it like yeah. that movie? Uh, no. 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 I, I, I actually didn't see that movie, but just from the clip. The clips. From, I didn't from see the, it. From the video. The yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> I don't think it was that. What? Did you, have the, did you eat food at the cafeteria? Yeah, we'd eat at the wow. cafeteria. How was uh, it? Was pizza day big for you, too? As pizza day. I mean, I got to say, the food at most of the uh, schools now that I think about it is just, I mean, bring your lunch. Bring your lunch. Yeah, because it's like, it, it's not healthy. And I understand that healthy food is not good for you. It, it doesn't Cheap. taste good. Mm -hmm. But it's like just pizza. And every day it's like pizza and um, some hot dogs and fries, run down vegetables that look just just like they don't have any nutrients in them. Wretched vegetables, <laughs> yeah, it's just rough. like soap. And now they have like uh, soda machines, like in the high schools, they have like really? soda machines and all that stuff. It's like that's terrible too. Unless you know, yeah. Why would you? Who's profiting off that? Why I don't know. I guess soda machines. I guess the money goes back into. I mean, there has to be some kind of an arrangement so where the money to goes back. Fucking poison your kids. But years ago, Florida did a thing where it's like. They did a, a shifty thing where it's like, oh, all the money from the lottery is going to go to education. It's like, oh, they just took the money from education and moved it somewhere else and had the lottery money replace the education budget. Oh, so it was a make, shifty so thing. So it's a way to pass the lottery there, yeah, yeah, yeah. where it's like, but if we said no to that, you would have put the money back yeah, in yeah, education. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My friend voted against the uh, slots in Maryland. It was like 15, 18 years ago. Yeah. 
And I'm like, he's real smart. I'm like, why? I thought you'd be. He goes, it's just a poor tax. Yeah. The rich people aren't doing it. Poor yeah. people are losing a, a one to ten percent of their income right. off this on the hopes they win. Right. Rich people just go to work more. Yeah. yeah, and yeah. That's how they make money. Yeah. And so you're just taxing the poor. Yeah. The rich people are on a boat somewhere. Is it Triangle of Paradise or whatever it is? Triangle. Uh, Quantum of Solace? No. Triangle of Misery? Woody Allen's in it. Woody Harrelson's in it. Is it new? It's new. I think it was out. Triangle this. of Sadness. Triangle of Sadness. It's a good movie. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. I got to check it funny. out. Funny. It's like funny. Oh, okay. You should see it with your, with your chick. Yeah. What else is there about the schools that we don't know? Um, it's, it's, it's an interesting forward yeah. backstory for sure. Well, what's interesting about what I did also is that you wouldn't have grades, you'd have goals because you would have individualized educational plans. Have you heard about oh. this? You would have this paperwork my that you have to do. Goals so should not be the same as your goals. Right, right. because you have different disabilities. Uh -huh. So it's like I'm creating a specific, in, that's why there's only eight to 10 kids in a class because like you're, you're creating an individualized educational plan for each child and you're addressing each child needs separately. What's what? That's what the smaller classroom is about, for their learning challenges and their emotional challenges. But I think what's happening now in schools, or at least what was happening at the end of my tenure, was people because it's a legal document. Most people were just focused on the paperwork, and so if if okay, so if the kid's not doing good, they go, well, let's have an IEP meeting and figure out why he's not doing good. And it's like, well, I could tell you why he's not doing good. He's not doing any of his work. He's putting his head down every day. And and they go, well, what can we do in order uh, to make that uh, better according to the, the document? So instead of coming in five out of five days with ready to work, maybe we can make it three out of five days where he's ready to like lower the bar a little bit so that he can stay in this school. It's uh -huh. like- yeah, 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 no, that's not functionally. I mean, it's going to look okay on paper for if this ever goes to any that's not really court. Or right? That's not really how you can't have a kid come in, put his head down, and be like, I don't want to be here. It's like, take the day off, dude. Like, I don't know what to tell you. Like, take the like, day what's off. What's going to do to all the other kids? Right. Like, because it like sets a precedent best, that yeah. everybody else is going to want to come in and put their head it's down. It's the best laid can't plans let it thing. Happen. And it's like, you haven't thought it all the way through. Like, yeah. they said, they, I don't know anything about this, but they said welfare made an epidemic of, of inner city dad's leaving right because the the mom would get more money if the dad took off yeah. so there's no incentive to try to work it out right she wasn't chasing him out but there's right. less incentives where or those kiosks the information kiosk around new york right like what a good idea for tourists you can plug in your phone you make calls and you're like oh homeless encampment right right and you're like oh i didn't even consider yeah the functional of how it actually is going to work yeah yeah so it's that and then it's uh because it's a legal document it's there's ways like where you could take something that's a legitimate uh, disability and then be like oh this kid just doesn't want to do this it's like well is that his defiant disorder it's like what are we doing it's a defiant disorder now yeah. it's like how about just being a bitch how about that yeah, yeah, yeah how about i'll work with him i'll work with him on any of uh all of the disabilities and even the emotional piece of it but you gotta give something you can't come in and just put your head down and that's what i was dealing with a lot Damn, so you'd have these meetings so and the administration would go well why don't you adjust the goals you know lower them it's like yeah, I still need to run a functional room. So, you know, th there's yeah. that. And then, uh, so I would have, di I had disagreements with the uh, administration. And at the end of that year, that was my second year at that school, they reprimanded me. And I go, well, I don't agree with this. I don't agree with... With the reprimand. Yeah, I don't agree with the reprimand. I think I'm trying to do the right thing, but you're not supporting what I'm doing. Because this is a wealthier district, and the wealthier districts don't want to get sued. So they'll just uh, they'll just acquiesce to anything that the parent says. So let me get this straight. I went to all this education. I went. I have my master's degree, and I'm working in this school district. And what was the point of all that if I'm just going to acquiesce to whatever a parent says because you don't want to get sued? So a lot of teachers are going through that now, where it's like you're just having to acquiesce with things that you know are wrong. You know they're wrong. It's not helping the kid. And and it's like and, these and firings too. I'm sure that cop was like, we gotta fire you. Like, but you know I was yeah, called yeah. a cop and this football person wasn't coach, yeah. And, and they're like, I know, but the His girlfriend so much. was black. He's like football yeah. I'm not saying he's not maybe there sure was some like, hidden you know, race. This isn't that. And I'm sure they're like, we do. Yeah. We have no choice. We have to fire someone we don't want to. Yes. Because the the outrage is so great. The we outrage can't get, we is can't huge. get through to them. Yeah. But in this case, they were they, they were uh, uh, afraid of getting sued, so they would just like Acquiesce. do whatever. And I think I think it happens a lot now. And the administration doesn't because there's no when you're having that fight, 
there's if you stick to your guns and you enforce like if you if you enforce what is supposed to happen you're doing the right thing but there's no victory in it you know what i mean like it's just easier to go okay whatever what if you're say? the administrator you go okay whatever the parent wants because i just don't want to deal with this i don't want to get sued but then the kid doesn't learn and yeah. then he, you're not doing the kid any favors the parent isn't actually doing the kid any favors it's like the kid's going to get out in the world and think that he could manipulate every system and he, you can't i mean yeah, we know that in the it's real like world it's like doing the math homework for them yes it's like yeah they'll get a better grade they'll get a better, better school but they'll be less equipped to do well at that better right. school so like what are we doing here right a D is important. Yeah. So the whole goal is to you have to accommodate their disability without just, you know, going overboard and letting them do whatever they want in the name of, you know, accommodating their disability. That's really what it is. Yeah. Because people can, you know, people abuse the system that way. They abuse it. So that's what it, that's that's the fight that you're having with the administrator, and they reprimanded me at the end of the year, and then I was like, "Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna resign," and they're like, "You're gonna resign?" I go, "Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna resign." Really? And they go, "You're gonna resign with no job?" I go, Ab- "I'm absolutely gonna resign with." Because no in job. their world, it's like it's all about tenureship and like yeah, tenure, and like- I'm like, I'm like. Oh, because what they also do in these kinds of jobs, wow. even if it's a good district, they rely on you to get married because at this time like people getting out they you have a relationship you're going to get married you're going to have kids once you get now married you have kids and have a house you you cannot you need that income no matter oh. what you have to do it for your family so they kind of rely on you having to be in that system wow. and then it's too late to get out once you have all that overhead you have a family but fortunately i'm broken enough to where i didn't have a family <laughs> yeah, yeah and i was able just to leave ramen is cheap yeah so that's when I it was about three wow. years into stand up doing open mics. And I was like, I'm going to go to New York and really try. And this was in Florida or Philadelphia? It was in Philly. Wow. Yeah. And you're like, sweet, I'm out of this job now. Sweet, I'm out of this job. But <clears throat> then I was like, should I look for another job? I was interviewing for other jobs. And then I'll never forget DeRosa came back to the uh, Laugh House. And he was doing a weekend or something. And I was still doing the Wednesday, Thursdays because he had just moved to New York eight months and, and was living like with Big J. Launched. And he goes, Mike, it's exciting up there. It's like people are talking about shows, pitching shows. Wow. Tough Crowd was a big thing. It's like, you know, all this kind of stuff. It's like, he goes, and I, I was doing the best out of the open mics and, and the Thursday shows back then. And uh, he goes, what are you doing here? Wow. What are you doing? I go, well, couldn't I just drive up to New York and stuff? He goes, just move, dude. What are you doing? <laughs> Just like, move. He's like, question. you'll figure it out when you get up there. Yeah. Stop. What are you holding on to here? You don't have a job. Your family is not from here. Just pick up and go. Figure out a place to live and 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 get up there. Wow. And it really snapped it into focus for me. I always credit him with that. Damn. Yeah. I credit him with uh, KFC at 2 a.m. <laughs> He's also a guy who's like, I'm not going to eat KFC tonight. I'm not going to eat KFC. And it's like, drink it, drink it. And he's like, All right, I got to go <laughs> KFC before I go home. I'm like, damn. Two beers ago, you <laughs> yeah. said. Right. No, he immediately, right. he immediately backtracks. Um, damn, that's frustrating. Mm-hmm. But also, very like, frustrating. It's like the homelessness, and like we got to do something. Like, what should we do? I'm like, yeah. I have no idea. It's a multi. People just won't admit. It's like, could you at least admit it's a multi layered problem? Yeah. It's not just as easy as like no one wants to give them a home. It's like no, 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 no. It's there, a multi-layered mental, problem. Mental there's the mental issues the here. Fucking, yeah. There's drug issues here. There's alcohol in addition to like extreme poverty and like it's yeah. a multi-layered, dude. It's not that easy to solve. Yeah, I love how that people are like oh, New York says we'll give shelter to any homeless uh, person. So like other states are, like busting like drop them off in New York, and you're like yeah, but that's not when homeless started. It's already been here. Yeah. I mean, sometimes I just wonder, like, where the country is going. It's just like, I think um, we're all just investigating each other and sending each other migrants. It's like, did you get the migrants (laughs) I sent you for Christmas? Otherwise, I'm gonna, (laughs) I'm gonna investigate you. Did you get the migrants I sent? I sent you migrants. Uh, Mike Vecchio's special is called "The Attractives." It's on YouTube right now. Uh, Everyone should go check it out. He is one of the best, one of the best comics around. And I was at the taping in in, in, uh, Nashville. That was a lot of fun. I was just in Nashville, and I did. uh, I was doing Nate's podcast and Theo Vaughn's podcast, and uh, 
I went to uh, Zany's to do uh, the Monday night new new jokes, and I was out in the hallway just kind of waiting to go on. And uh, there's a picture of all of us that night. Oh no! It's a very really? special picture to me. Very special because it's it's me, it's Katie, and it's all of you guys. We took a picture together. I don't know if you remember. It was on stage. We all took a picture together, and it's up in the headshot on the in wall that hallway, in with, the hallway right outside the green room. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it's a very special picture to me. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah, yeah. it was fun. Shane and, and me and Sal went. Yeah, yeah, and met yeah. Up with the people, and it was just yeah. like a nice hang. I remember Nate's <laughs> Nate's wife pretty much calling, without saying it like this, pretty much calling Shane a homo for drinking Trulies. <laughs> she, because she said it to me, I'm like, I'm not even drinking Trulies. Like, oh, then it's another one. It's another one. <laughs> She's very funny. Oh, I love Laura her. is very I love funny. Her. I love yeah, her. She always was. Yeah, You're living I didn't here in know Queens. her back then. Yeah, yeah, I met her at like Bonnaroo. Yeah, she's very funny, very um, sarcastic, and I, mm-hmm. I like that a lot. Um, but what a fun time just hanging out. That was great. Just hanging out. That was a dream. On, drinking on the bus. It was a dream come true, between man. Between shows and yeah. stuff. And it was awesome. Cigars. Smoking cigars. Yeah, was the was the big thing, too. Yeah, Justin had these cigars. Justin had, yeah. the, Justin had got me a gift of cigars, Justin Smith. And... Um, we smoked them, and then we were on and off the bus. But just the whole thing, I flew my mom down for it. My mom's 82, and uh, I flew my mom and sister down to watch the taping. So they were there, and uh, I don't know if you met them. Did you meet them? The, she knew. She knows Jay, because Jay's been to my house before. Right. And they know Sal, sister. because um, Sal. Sal got my I got my sister backstage to meet them. They went to the Jokers when they came to town. So they know those guys, and uh, um, my mom... Met Nate, but knew Jay, knew Dan. She knew Jay and Dan. So, um, but anyway, it was my mother was just like in in tears. She was so touched by like how great it was. So yeah, it was very it was very emotional. It's cool having all of us there for, especially when it's a special on the road and not New York. Yeah, where it's like you just can't have your friends, but it's such a fun moment. It's a special not to use that word twice, but it's a special moment. Yeah, and every every comic relates to it like. You're doing a special. I've recorded a CD, even if it's just that. Yeah. Or I want it. To, like this yeah. is awesome. This is big. Yeah. Well, it's, it's the only it was, thing that unites all of us. We all was, get how big a special is. Right. And it was part of the Nashville Comedy Festival. I should mention mm-hmm. that. And also that um, uh, people have to realize how I think we get on podcasts and stuff, and people don't realize how we're all connected. Sometimes, like guys from our generation, I don't think it's happening now. I think it's changing very rapidly. But there was a camaraderie there because we all had to come up through the club system at the time. There wasn't this waiting in individualized line at the same mics, yes. just waiting and waiting. Wait, right. there's no way to get ahead without doing the system. Yeah. So it's like, uh, hey, you're going to the Bruco after this? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to that one. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I'll meet up with you there. But I don't think people understand that it's years and years and years and years of that. Yeah. So it's like 20 years of that. Like you came, I met you after you I came from already from LA, but like I've known Jay for all, I've known Jay for 20 years. I've known Joe for 20 years. Um, Marina, like some of these other, like Marina used to do the Boston. She used to run Mondays uh, oh, wow. for Tony Woods. And I knew Marina, wow. Rachel Feinstein. Fine, I don't even know her last name. Yeah. <laughs> no, Fine. Rachel Feinstein. Much Feinberg. <laughs> Rachel <laughs> Feinstein. Like I've known those guys for like yeah, 20 so plus in. years. That's how I run a ZC and like, where it's just like you know them by heart. Yeah. You just know them instead of like yeah. have met them. But I don't know if that exists anymore where people are coming up that, I don't want to say dependent on a each type. other, but intertwined together because you're all, you have to get yeah, out. Doing and this podcast fit. thing, getting up, getting ahead outside of it. Right. But there you was had some to separation together. of like, oh, you're a factory comic, I'm a store comic. We right. didn't run in the same circles. Yeah. Or you know you're an Upper East Side comic, yeah. I'm a Downtown West Side comic. So That's like that used to be kind of a other. thing. Yeah, it was like oh, I went to the comic strip. It's like oh, then all those guys know who I am. Even right. it's like oh, I was in the Village for five years. Yeah. yeah. Damn, I got to see that yeah. picture. Anyway, the special is called The Attractives. Mike Vecchione. Um, I don't know how many times you've been on this podcast. Two at least. Yeah, two at least. And then you've been on yoga. Oh, I love the yoga, man. <laughs> Those were fun. I'm better now because I'm leaner. And one guy had a really funny comment because I was doing the yoga. He goes, Mike looks like a boiled potato. <laughs> That it's like you know what that hit me where it hurt. It's one of those things where it like it like hits you like, drive ah. me. like it's like yeah yeah. I need to do that. Oh, I'm gonna lose weight. Yeah. <laughs> Boil yeah. potato. Not even oh potato. my god, that guy was like, like soft. That guy really hit me where it hurt. Oh. <laughs> as some as the most evil man in comedy, I'm saying that's a solid line. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, thanks, Mike. Everybody, right now, go watch that special. Don't even listen to the outro. Uh, um, can I say something? Yeah. Thank you for having me on, and thank yep. you for. Uh, all the support 
over the years and helping me. Um, I really genuinely appreciate it. You, the most evil, but you have the biggest heart. I'll say it. I'll, I'll shout it from the mountain top. Be careful. Be careful. Um, uh, yeah, no problem. I mean, I have some easy to support fucking talented people. Um, it's hard. It's harder with fucking you know Bert. Um, <laughs> bye, bye. Thanks, everybody. So I sat out here the entire time while you guys were uh, watching um, and listening to uh, um, uh, to Mike Vecchione on my podcast, Professor Payne. Um, I burned horribly. What I should have done is stopped the recording, uh, gone inside while it played, and then come back out. But I didn't. And now I've burned my lily white skin. I didn't have a boss base tan. That's a mistake a lot of people make all summer. And I think now, you know, in March, it's time. You get a boss base tan. And you can tan the whole year, but you gotta get that base tan and you gotta make it boss. Because if you're gonna half ass it, you're gonna burn, burn, burn all through the summer. You get that base tan, really cook it, cook it, cook it like you would a fucking. I'm giving you guys facts to life right now. I'm giving you keys to live your life to the, to the best you can. Boss base tans. B O S S. You know what I'm saying. Make it boss. So you get that boss base tan down. It's kind of like when you're cooking a marshmallow. Some guys will just like roast it like I will. Some guys will cook it way off the flame until it just starts to get a little yellow, then a little brown, then a little more brown. And it takes them like 15 minutes. That's what you need to do with your base tan. Now after that, you know, put some plum block on as normal and shit like that. But you'll just bronze and bronze and bronze. I'm telling you, that's facts from your Uncle Ari. Um, again, go watch the fucking, what's it called right now? The Attractors Right Now by Mike Vecchione. His new special, it's out on YouTube.com on Nate Land, uh, but we'll have a link for it in the other boxes if you're watching this on YouTube. Click subscribe right now to my YouTube as well and go watch my special, Ari Shafir Jew. Hold Nate to task in those comments as well. Um, what was I going to say about it? Wait, I just had something I was going to say about it. This is recording. I was going to say, damn it. Go watch The Attractors. Oh, and then next week, April 5th, will be Big J's uh, uh, Dog Belly that I helped produce. I need another name because it's not producing. It's like going over the material of the comics ahead of time, hiring everybody or hiring the people who hire people, making sure the comic is fucking doesn't have to worry about the fucking shit stuff that I'll worry about, but also developing the material. Engineered by? Nah. Organized by? Something. The point is, it's a great time for stand-up comedy. Uh, and we, I have n more new people of tapes even since then. Uh, uh, Joe List's special is coming. Mark Norman taped his special. Uh, they'll both be out. And one of the legends of stand-up comedy in New York City and really the world uh, taped a special. I don't know if I'm allowed to say it or not. At San Francisco, at Cobb's Comedy Club um, a couple weeks ago. And I'm, we're all very excited about that. Um, all right. Go watch The Attractives. Thanks for tuning in, you guys. Ne but next week, Big J Oakerson will be on. And it will be on on Wednesday. Uh, prepare yourselves. Goodbye. I suggest, oh, if you're looking for a new podcast to listen to, oh, maybe we should start doing this. If you're looking for a new podcast to listen to, let me see if I was on any good ones. Let me see if I was on any good new ones recently. Glassman's is good. I like Glassman's, Rick Glassman's. And Colm, he has a good one. Colm Terrell, go give that a listen. I'm trying to think who else. As always, the Are You Garbage, where you might be drunk. I was on both of those recently. Give Colm's a fucking go. Kid needs a break. All right. And he's funny. And it's a fun, it was a fun hangout. I think friend Azizi did it recently too. All right. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs>